So I wanted to go ahead and do a lot more of the Shaman King decks as deck profiles, but then started playing a lot of Vanguard Zero, you know, from zero from zero took up a lot, a lot of my time and more importantly, like my upload schedule and then Fighters Collection became a thing and there's a lot of decks that I've been having a lot of fun with there. But today we're going to go over my favorite deck in Shaman King in Avenger, Le Surge Diento. So we have here the Grade 3 Avenger, Le Surge Diento. This is one of the decks from the Shaman King collab set, and it has the rather interesting playstyle. It kind of focuses mainly on manipulating the top cards of your deck and making sure you check triggers. So it's kind of like Hexorb, and it also has an order that kind of gives you power when you check a trigger to make it even more like Hexorb. And that's kind of the strength of this deck is just getting, you know, fat columns swinging in, checking crits, sweeping for game. Uh, so we have two abilities here. First, we have the Oversoul ability, which, as you know, is for every Shaman in the Shaman King uh, set. This one asks you to put a regard with Morphina in its card name into your soul. And then this unit gets 10k until the end of the turn. Afterwards, you search your deck for up to one Lesurge order. Reveal it and put it into your hand and shuffle your deck. I really hope that's how you're saying Surge because I'm going to be saying that a lot throughout this. Uh, this is really good because you, unlike some of the other uh, Shaman, the only other Shaman I think that has this is uh, Wooden Sword Ryu. But you have two copies of your uh, spirit in like rearguard form. So not just in triggers. Uh, so you actually have about 20 <laughs> targets in your deck that you can actually hit with this. So pretty much half your deck, so it's very hard to miss this Oversoul. Then, uh, he has the skill here, continuous on Vanguard Circle. If you Oversoul this turn, when you would put the top card of your deck into the trigger zone for this unit's drive check, perform instead, look at the top two cards of your deck, choose a card from among them, put it into your trigger zone, and put the rest on the bottom of your deck instead. So, whenever you drive check, look at two cards, pick whatever you want to check, check it and then put whatever else on the bottom uh so it is kind of like in that way better than hexorb because hexorb relies on her vanguard or sorry her rear guards to be able to manipulate the cards on top of her deck aside from when you persona ride whereas like surge literally says hey i'm gonna check <laughs> this trigger i just saw from top two okay thanks bye <laughs> So going into the ride line, we've got ourselves the grade zero kind-hearted Boitless Surge. You do need to play this specifically because then you can ride over with the grade one judgment and death penalty, Le Surge. Whose ability says that when this unit is placed by riding on the kind-hearted Boitless Surge, you can search your deck for up to one dancing beautifully Morphina, call it to the back row center rearguard circle and shuffle your deck. So that's why you have to play the grade zero. Then from there, we'll go into the Grey 2, Ever-Changing Pendulum Le Surge, who says on Vanguard Circle, when this unit attacks, while well, boosted by a unit with Morphina in his card name, you can counter blast one. Look at the top two cards of your deck, choose up to one card among them, put one into your hand, and then put the rest on the top of your deck. So uh, you essentially draw from the top two, and you can put uh, whatever is left on top of your deck, which will hopefully be a trigger or something like that. It also just gives you some intel on what you're going to check next. And finally, for the red deck, of course, we go into the grade 3 that we just discussed. So, grade 3 is very simple. We play three copies of Le Surge in the main deck, because uh, Persona Writing is not only good, but it's also very good in his deck. And then finally, three copies of this new card for the sake of justice. So this is for the sake of justice. If you have a unit with a Le Surge in its card name, you can play this with the cost of Counterblast 1. Draw a card, choose one of your units with Le Surge in its card name, and it's the following ability. Where on Vanguard or on Rearguard Circle, when your drive check reveals a trigger, all of your front row rearguard units get 5k to the end of the turn. So uh, this is what I meant by kind of gives you sort of that hex orb power buff to your uh, rear guards. So it kind of works as like a half front trigger whenever you check any trigger. So you can get some pretty beefy numbers. There is another order for the surge with spoiler alerts. Um, I don't play in this build. You're more than welcome to do so. I just never really found the need to play it. 
but what it does is that it lets you counter blast one, soul blast one, and when your Elder Surge attacks any of them, uh, you can battle all of your opponent's front row units. Uh, so it's pretty good, especially because there's not really any kind of removal in this deck. I just couldn't really find a spot for it that I really liked, or a situation where I'd really like this card, but I, I might end up putting in one of these down the line. For the Grade 2s, we've got ourselves three copies of Dowsing User Le Surge, three copies of X-Laws Le Surge the Ethel, one singular copy of uh, Holy Girl Iron Maiden Jean, and then finally four copies of Becoming the World Slap Comedian Joko. Dowsing User Le Surge here is a pretty cool card. It's when placed on Rear Guard Choco, you can count on boss one, search up to one rear, uh, one card with Poppy Spirit Morphina, call it to Rear Guard Choco in the same column as this unit, and shuffle your deck. So if you've seen anything from Shaman King or my previous video, this is kind of like the counter to Joko, in that on place you can call out a uh, Spirit or a Rear Guard, so it makes a decent column. <laughs> it's nowhere near as good as Joko, but we'll get over, we'll get into that in a bit. Um, then when this unit attacks, it can look at the top card of your deck and put it on the top or the bottom of your deck. Which has the obvious advantage of helping out Le Surge, hit triggers, and um, it is just in general good for filling out your board as well. The Poppy Spirit Morphina here is the one that he calls out. It's a different Morphia from the one the Ride deck calls out. This card is a bit odd. It has two abilities. One when it's placed on Rear Circle. You look at the top card of your deck, and you just leave it there. <laughs> so you just take a peek, and then she gets 2k until the end of that turn. So she's 6k base, but for that one turn, she'll be 8k. Then, if you have a Lesurge, a uh, unit Lesurge in the same column as this unit, all of your units in the same column as this unit cannot be chosen by your opponent's card effects. So this is really nice, because she's basically an Impex as a booster. Because uh, she protects herself and Le Surge, so it's good if you go up against, you know, Gravidia or anything of that sort that tries to, you know, blow up your field, Morphina will protect you. And then you can also, once she becomes 6k, use the same Morphina to Oversoul with. And we got ourselves the other Le Surge here, the Regard Le Surge. So this says when this unit attacks, if you played an order this turn, this unit gets 5k until the end of that battle. Then at the end of that battle, you can put them into Soul. Look at the top card of your deck and put it on the top or bottom of your deck. One of the main issues I've found with the Surge is that he doesn't really have any good dedicated attacking rear guards. Uh, this one is pretty decent because it does give, you know, 5k to itself, so it's 15k. And going into the soul doesn't really help much um, at all, <laughs> to be speaking frankly with you. Because um, you don't really need soul in this deck. Looking at the top and bottom of your deck is not half bad. So in general, I just kind of use this as just a 15k beater. Then we've got uh, one copy of Holy Girl Iron Maiden Janine here, who's very simple, on place on Rear Guard Circle. So last three, draw a card, counter charge. Uh, just need this to counter charge because you use a lot of counter blasts in this deck, um, between all the cards that you use. And uh, that's it. <laughs> that's all she's there for. You can, if you'd like, if you don't care about the draw the counter charge, there's stuff like how the future king how that you can replace it with, where it basically kind of does the same thing, but it's act. You still blast three, choose one of your opponent's rear guards and retire, it, and this guy gets a crit. So this combos pretty well with the fact that you can power up your uh, units, but of course you won't be able to do it too much because you don't have too many decent ways to get six, uh, sorry, three soul to be able to soul blast constantly. I guess six if you really want to use this at least twice, but it is a nice option to swing in, uh, power it up. Hit your opponent with a crit. Then, of course, we've got ourselves the Joko engine here with becoming the world's top comedian Joko on place. Rearguard Joko. Your opponent cannot intercept. Then you can Soul Blast 2, search for a Jaguar Mick, call it to Rearguard Joko in the same column as this unit, and then you can shuffle your deck. Jaguar Mick, as we went over in the Yo video. Um, this becomes 2k whenever it boosts anything, and if it boosts, boosts Yoko, it becomes 5k boost, uh, or an additional 5k boost instead of the 2k which makes this a very, very nice 23k column for basically just playing one card. And it has the extra ability of forcing your opponent to show you three cards. Uh, so you not only get to know what you're going to be drive checking, but you also see what your opponent has in their hands. Uh, so this is a very good deck to be able to use if you uh, can use all of that knowledge, because you'll 
basically be able to see the future at that point, knowing what your opponent's going to guard, what they're going to play, knowing what you're going to check, what you're going to be able to add to your hand and defend with, so on and so forth. Grade 1s is basically everything we just went over. We've got the um, popping Spirit Morphia here. Three copies of her. We got ourselves three copies of the Jaguar Mick. Two copies of the Morphia. Dancing beautifully Morphia, that is. And then four copies of the PG. So going over this again, as we just mentioned, uh, it gets 2k on place and it can protect everything in the same column if it has a little surge in the same column. It's very nice and you can oversoul with it. And Mick we literally just talked about, but it gets 5k with Joko, 2k otherwise, and can force your opponent to look at or show you three cards in their hand. The last grade one here, aside from the PGs, is the Dancing Beautifully Morphia here. So this is the one that you actually call out from your um, ride deck. I only play two of these because, again, you have so many other Morphia targets. You can change around the ratios if you like. She's not amazingly useful. Um, she says, when this unit is put from Rear Guard Circle into the soul for the cost of Oversoul, look at the top two cards of your deck. Or sorry, look at the top one card of your deck. Call it to either Rear Guard Circle or put it into your hand. And if you put it into your hand, choose a card from your hand and discard it. Um, I don't really like using this effect much, and I kind of don't have the choice because it's not an optional effect, but you basically are sometimes forced to look at a critical trigger that was on the top of your deck and ideally add it to hand to guard with, but then discard a card or call it out, which both kind of suck because I probably would have liked to check that. But it is nice sometimes if there's like a Joko there, you can play Joko, get the Mick, uh, and it's great because you get great value out of it. So it's not the best consistent card, but um, you do call it out from the deck and uh, sometimes getting a free card is nice. Of course, we play the upgraded PGs here. We've got the Ultra Senji Raketsu Art of Direction Shamanic Oracle here, uh, as opposed to the Yo one. Both of these are ridiculously expensive right now for no good reason. People are being a bunch of clowns and not letting people play Shaman King decks. But this just says you can guard with this, and uh, whatever unit you choose will not be uh, hit for that battle. But if you have two or more cards in your hand, you have to choose a card from your hand and discard it. So I'm going to be real with you guys, my trigger lineup is a little weird. Um, so we've got ourselves here, four copies of the Morphia crits, three copies of the Soul crits, then we actually have ourselves four copies of, I'm pretty sure I said three, I hope I said three for that, uh, but we got ourselves four copies of the front trigger with the effect, and then four copies of the Morphia here, heal, and then the Shaman King trigger order. So, the reason this is kind of odd is the way that this deck works, based on some of the things that I just went over. Um, in this build, I specifically search out this one order with my Oversoul, because that's the only order for the Surge that I play in my deck. However, this deck is, or the deck in general is very odd, because it wants you to check triggers. Um, and triggers are nice. <laughs> and it would be nice to be able to put those triggers on rear guards sometimes, you know? But we've got this guy who uh, is only good before you check triggers, you know, attacking before the Vanguard. And we have this guy who just disappears into the soul. So it's very difficult to justify playing fronts, to be honest. Uh, but it has worked out. It gives me the shield value. It also makes my columns very BP because, you know, they can become 15k extra uh, if I check a front trigger. And also the shield value is very nice. Uh, but you can... Definitely uh, play an extra crit, and then if you'd like, play draws. Uh, this does let you draw every turn, so that's why I don't really feel the need to play draws, and instead I'm playing the fronts here. Other than that, there's not really too much worth of note here. Uh, the tr over trigger is really up to you. The Shaman King one is pretty good. Um, aside from losing the shield value, you can uh, just do yourself, your, <laughs> do yourself, do your opponent one damage, make them deal themselves one damage, I should say. And then uh, that's good. <laughs> but. Since it's Lucerge, you can kind of like see this preemptively and check this a lot more easier, We're getting free damage. But also retiring all of your opponent's units is also very cool. Because uh, it's the full board wipe, resist, whatever, we're not choosing anything, it's just the whole board is really good and you oversold pretty easily, so I think this is a good option. Likewise, the other uh, Obaria is also a good option because, again, you can see it coming. Uh, you can give two units 100 million power which is fine. Uh, you can't really restand or get anything too crazy unless you play like Cal, then you have like crits with 100 million power, which is nice. Other than that, the uh, damage I think is a little bit better. 
that's about it. The deck is pretty simple. You know, you go into the search, go into your grade one, search out your Morphia here, um, do your plays as usual, go into the grade two, be able to check the top two cards of your deck, maybe add the Joko, put the critical on top of your deck, which you can then chuck, smack your opponent with a critical, ride into your grade three, more than welcome to Oversoul at that point, grant yourself the order, then maybe if you're lucky off of the Morpheus skill, you can maybe hit an actual Weir Guard and add a critical trigger. More than welcome to play the Joko to get your some field presence. Using his skill to get out Mick, which will not only give you a nice column to attack with, but it will also give you the ability to turn off intercepts and look at your cards in your opponent's hand. Then now since you've oversold, you've got a nice 23k Vanguard. You can very easily go ahead and check your triggers when you attack basically how that works is you just take the top two cards of your deck take a look at them um i don't really need le surge right now but it is nice uh, he can call out morphia we'll add the pg so we'll check pg add it to our hand and then we can do that again for our second twin drive check don't need the order because we can add that back uh to our hand with the uh, Oversoul ability, and we'll just go ahead and take this crit and check it. And uh, that's about it. Check triggers, get big columns, win the game, realize that Lesurge is the best character. And that will do it for this deck profile here. I really do like Lesurge. He is my favorite character out of all of Shaman King, even though when I opened the packs and I got him, I had no idea who the fuck he was, or when I looked at him on the box. That's because I've watched Shaman King so long ago, and I honestly I forgot he even existed. <laughs> but I remember really liking him growing up, and I actually really like his deck. I will try and see if I can cover some of the other Shaman King decks. I do have, like, Wooden Sword Ryu built. Uh, I have a Hao and a Horo Horo built that I'd like to at least go over. Or not Hao, um, Tauren. Uh, but I would like to build Hao, maybe even Janine. See how they work. Um, but... We'll see, because we've got, you know, more Fighters Collection stuff that I want to go over as well as Set 6 coming out. And I'm, for once, somewhat prepared, and I'll be covering some decks on time, hopefully. Uh, even more than the usual ones, uh, aside from, like, Barrow and stuff like that. But, in any case, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Until next time, take care of yourself, play Vanguard, and have yourself a damn good one.